morning, Life Bridge. We are so glad that you have joined us today. God is doing something special at LifeBridge, and we are excited that you are a part of it. At LifeBridge, church is more than just a service. There are ways for you to be involved and be connected throughout the week because one of our values as a church is community. So if you have not joined us beyond the message, I want to encourage you to sign up for our email and connect at least one of these ways this week. You can find the link to sign up for the email that we send out twice a week below. One way to connect with others and to grow in your prayer life is to join us on Tuesday night prayer meetings. Join us as we pray with each other and for each other. Another way to connect is on our Wednesday night, Why I Believe. This week, we will hear the testimony of Ellie, how God has made an impact on her life and how she continues to be a light in the Indonesian embassy here in Panama. All of our meetings happen on Zoom. So sign up for our email or send us a message and we will make sure that you get all the information you need to connect. Also each week, we have a different Bible reading plan on the YouVersion app. It is a great way to be in the Word daily and connect with others. Another of our values at LifeBridge is generosity. You can be generous by giving your time, your talents, and your treasure. A couple weeks ago, you heard Pastor Nate talk about how you could be specifically generous to our LifeBridge family. In this time of great need, we began being generous by making funds available to our people in LifeBridge with financial needs. Many of you have responded to that and have started giving specifically for that purpose. This week, I'd like to challenge you to take it a step further. We are extending our generosity by being generous to our neighbors, just like God commands us to do. You may be wondering, who's life's rich neighbor? Every week we arrive at the movie theater, the employees let us in, clean the theater and facilities we need to hold our weekly worship. With the mall being closed, most of them have been placed on suspended contracts or have no income. And we have provided funds for 28 workers to receive gift cards to purchase groceries for their families. They are a total of 96 workers. It's because of your generosity at LifeBridge that we are able to help so many people who are hurting at this time. So thank you for your generosity. Have you ever tried to take a picture of the stars at night? And then you go back and you look at that picture and it doesn't really capture what you see? Author Carlos Whitaker tells this story that one night he was camping with his family and, and the kids had gone to bed and he and his wife were laying there looking up at the night sky, amazed at how many stars were out. And so his wife said to him, I want you to capture this moment right now so that we can look back later and remember it. And so he went and he grabbed his really expensive camera that they had bought. You know, one of those cameras with all the, the buttons and knobs and all kinds of different settings and adjustments that you can make. And he didn't really know how to use it. So he, on the top of it, he turned the dial to auto mode and he took this picture. He showed it to his wife, and, and she didn't really like the picture. She said it, it didn't capture the, the fullness of the night. It didn't show all the stars that they could see there. The picture really only showed like four stars. It didn't really capture the essence of what they were seeing. 
but he didn't know how to take a picture in the way that really showed all of those things. And so he, he called a friend and he got all the information he needed. He, he had to take the camera out of auto mode and put it into manual mode. He had to adjust the aperture and, and the shutter speed. He had to put it on a tripod and change a whole bunch of other settings in order to capture this picture. Look at this picture. Wow. I mean, doesn't this look awesome? This, my friends, is life to the fullest. And this is exactly what Jesus came to give us. And so many of us are walking around with four stars in our lives. And we're thankful for those four stars in our life. But I believe God is looking at us saying, I have so much more for you. I'm glad you're thankful for those four stars, but I have 40 million more stars for you. So many of us live lives in auto mode. We go through life believing the lies, living in the habits, living in the reoccurring negative thoughts in our minds. And instead of living in the fullness uh, that God promises us all throughout scripture, we live in auto mode. If you're just joining us, we're in a series called Kill the Cockroach, where we're looking into the lies that you and I believe and how it leads us to the bad habits, negative thoughts, and other damaging behaviors. A cockroach is a personal agreement that you have made with a lie. We all have cockroaches in our lives. No one is exempt. A cockroach is something that you believe about yourself based off a lie you convince yourself of. And so many, so, so you may believe like, I am not lovable or no one cares about me. And that is a lie or a cockroach that you may have in your life. You may believe that you're not good enough or that you are better than others. Those are cockroaches. That is a, a lie that you believe. And, and, and these are lies that we tell ourselves and we believe them. But then in order to cover up those nasty lies, we, we self-medicate with a bunch of ugly behaviors. To cope with the lies that you and I give ourselves, we, 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 we give ourselves false comfort in the form of alcohol, pornography, drugs, gambling, or social media addiction. We cover up these lies in our lives with all sorts of behaviors or abuse in order to make ourselves feel better. Now, for some of you, it may be alcohol. And for others of you, it may be drugs. Or maybe you may binge watch Netflix. It may be food or eating or, or working out. There are so many ways in which you and I behave in order to bring comfort into our lives. But the reason we do that is because deep down, tucked away, there is a lie that we have believed about ourselves. And what I hope to do today is lead you to a place where you can begin to identify these behaviors, the bad habits or negative thoughts that creep into your mind. And instead, begin to live life to the fullest. Begin to live the way that Christ intended us to live. Right now, we have all been deeply impacted by the coronavirus on so many different levels. But there is a virus that has been around since the beginning of time. And that virus is, is lies. It was a lie that convinced Adam and Eve in the garden to go against what God had commanded. Lies to have a major impact on the way we live our lives and whether or not we live life to the fullest. Lies, what they do is they, they take root deep inside of our lives and quietly attach themselves to our identity, to our, our values, our beliefs about who we are. And then as a result, they, they, they leak into our relationships, our faith, our, our families, and into our careers. The lies, what they do is they, they rob us of, of joy and love and peace. They rob us of life. To the fullest. And you may be listening to this and think, well, 
I'm okay with four stars. I don't need any more stars. I'm, I'm content with that. Auto mode is fine. Manual mode sounds way too hard, way too complicated. Why would I want more? Why would I want life like that? Jesus is, is clear that you and I, we have an enemy. And he often talked about the war that you and I are in. A battle that we fight in. And this is not hand-to-hand -hand combat, but this is a spiritual battle. And it is going on all around us. Our, enemy, our enemy's job is to keep us from living the life to the fullest. That, that, that life that is promised to us. But the great news is that he tells us that in him, as followers of Jesus, we can have victory in the battle. And that, that we can defeat the enemy. And his lies that, that hold us back. The lies that, that beat us up and rob us of true life that you and I desire. So I hope you will continue doing the hard work to identify those cockroaches in your life and kill them. So that you can experience life to the fullest. Again, cockroaches are lies that you and I believe. And the only way you can kill a cockroach in your life is with the power of Jesus Christ in your life. That is the only way. There is, there's no shortcuts. There's no easy way. Only Jesus, only his power in your life will restore, support, and strengthen you, placing you on a firm foundation. Only the cross can truly help you hunt down and kill the cockroach in your life. And this is what you and I need to do if we are going to break free from the grips of sin and darkness in our lives. In John 10, Jesus tells us that he is the good shepherd and that we are the sheep. He tells us that we can trust him as the shepherd and that as the good shepherd, his job is to protect and keep us safe. He goes on to say this in verse 9. Yes, I am the gate. Those who come through me will be saved. Jesus is the good shepherd, but he is also the gate. You see, the shepherd would, would place himself at the opening, at the entrance to the pen. He functions as the gate, allowing sheep to go in and out of the pen, but also keeping threats out. But what is interesting here is that he says, those who come in through me, those who follow me will be saved. Now, that word saved there in the Greek is sozo. It means to restore or to redeem, to heal or rescue. If you are suffering. If, you are, if your bad habits or thoughts are consuming you or holding you back from Jesus... He says that through him, you can be rescued from it. He goes on to say the sheep, they will come and go freely and will find good pastures. When you and I, the sheep, follow Jesus, he says that we will find life. When you follow Jesus, you will find peace and joy and you will be filled with abundance. He says the sheep will come and go, meaning that he will provide for your daily needs. You will find nourishment, that you will find life, but it will only be through him, Jesus. But then he comes, but then comes the warning, a warning about the enemy. Verse 10, the thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. That word steal is klepto, to, to take away. This is where we get our English word kleptomania. Someone whose persistent impulse is to steal. You see, the enemy doesn't want us physically dead. He wants us spiritually dead. He wants to steal our lives and fill them with cockroaches so that we are consumed by the lies consumed by the bad habits and, and negative thoughts because he knows that it will destroy us. This leaves us useless to be used by God. But the great news is Jesus always gets the last word. But my purpose, Jesus says, is to give them a rich 
and satisfying life. That word rich is not a monetary term. It, it is rich in quality. He is not talking about bank accounts and luxury homes. He's, not ta- he's, he's talking about quality of life here. A fullness and satisfaction in your life that only comes through Jesus. Not just four stars, but 40 million stars. Now that is quality. And then in verse 11, Jesus reminds us of who he is and what he did. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd sacrifices his life for the sheep. And that is exactly what Jesus ultimately did on the cross. He sacrificed himself so that you and I could experience this, this fullness of life. And this is what a good shepherd does. He lays down his life. And Jesus died to defeat the lies. Jesus died to kill the lies. And so what lies are you believing What lies are keeping you from living life to the full? Today, you begin to hunt down and kill the cockroach. But you may ask, well, how do we do that? How do we hunt it down and kill it? Well, first of all, you have to identify the cockroach in your life. And this is going to take some time and personal evaluation. I encourage you to take some time and write down the answers to these questions. What are the things I tell myself? When I look in the mirror, what goes through my mind? What are the things that I think about myself that I may not say out loud? How would I like to be known? What are the areas of my life that I struggle with? Where do I feel like I continue to fail or come up short? Lastly, what are the self-medicating habits that I have? Maybe it's not a, a major moral failure, but just something that keeps me distracted from God. When I was young, I really didn't like who Nate was. So instead of becoming the man God wanted me to be, I let the people I surrounded myself with dictate how I lived my life. What kind of clothes I wore, music I listened to, how I acted, how I spoke to others. And like many teenagers, I became easily influenced by those around me. And I did this so that I would be accepted. I had a fear of not being accepted. And this all came from multiple instances in my life. When I didn't make the basketball team in middle school, my coach told me I was just not good enough to be on the team. In elementary, I had this special class that I had to go to several times a week to learn the simple skills that everyone else had already mastered. And so it was humiliating when I would get singled out in front of the whole class to go to these classes. I didn't like being different. I wanted to be accepted. I wanted to be the same. And as a teenager, I was rejected by a group of friends. When, But when I started to drink and when I started to get high, I was cool enough to be welcomed into their group. The words and and actions of others, they took root deep down in my soul. I didn't realize it then, but as a result, I, I loved to please people and those around me. But it wasn't until later in my life that I realized that the only opinion that matters in my life should be God's. And instead of living to be accepted by others, I I surrendered my life to him. And I was permanently brought into his fold. No matter how many times I was rejected by others, no matter how many times I screwed up, I was always accepted by God. This was a major cockroach in my life, and it still comes up even as an adult. But what I have to do is I have to quickly identify it as a lie, and I don't need to believe it. Now, once you have identified the cockroach in your life, 
once you begin to find those lies that you have come to believe, you have to prepare yourself for battle. And you prepare yourself with the Holy Spirit. You go to war with all these bad habits and thoughts, and you can overcome them. Paul tells us in Ephesians 6, Be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. Put on God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all the strategies of the devil. Again, you see, we cannot do it on our own power. You are to be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. It starts by taking this posture of humility and saying, God, I cannot do it without you. I, I, I need you, God. And because without God's armor, without God on your side, you and I, we will always fail. We need Him to stand firm. Because life is a battle. Our circumstances and our choices in life, they always seem like they're against us. It, it, it's like war all day. The Bible calls this spiritual warfare. And the enemy is Satan. And so how do you find him? Well, this week, I hope that you're going to join us in our Bible reading plan on the YouVersion Bible app. As we explore Ephesians 6 together, it can be like a spiritual boot camp where we learn how to put on the whole armor of God and what each part of the armor does, what the belt does, what the sword does, what the helmet does. And this is what Paul writes to us in Ephesians, and this is what we're going to explore together this week. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies but against evil rulers and authorities of this unseen world, against the mighty powers in this dark world, and against the evil spirits in the heavenly places. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so that you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then, after the battle, you will be able to stand firm. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth, and the body armor of God's righteousness. For the shoes put on the peace that comes from the good news, so that you will be fully prepared. In addition to all these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Put on salvation as your helmet, and take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. So this week, as we really dig deep into what each item of the armor of God is in our devotional, I hope that you will prepare to fight, knowing that God is on your side and we need Him and we need His weapons in order to kill the cockroaches in our life. Now I believe that some of you watching this right now, you're, you've tried on your own to kill the cockroaches in your life. But you've been defeated time and time again. You've tried to do it on your own, but the battle continues to wage all around you. I believe that many of us, we've bought into the lie of who God is. We like to think of God as this angry God. He's just waiting to punish us. And this is a lie. This is the lie that we have bought into. That God is just a God of, of rules and commands. That, that's a lie. That is not the God of the Bible. That is not the God that we serve. God loves you so much that he sent his one and only son Jesus to this earth to die for you and me so that we could have eternal life. So that you and I would not have to go to, to battle on our own. And all you and I have to do to receive this, this free gift of salvation, to be able to have someone fighting with us, is that we need to ask him. Jesus says, come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened. And maybe that's you right now. You need rest. You, you need to be loved. You, need to, you have bought into the lies that you're not good enough, that you're unlovable. And Jesus says, come to me. Come to me just as you are. Jesus loves you so, so much. 
And if that's you and you realize that you need help defeating these lies in your life, today is the day you ask Jesus to come into your life and fight with you. Maybe you're listening to this and you realize you've never made that decision. And you've never invited Jesus into your life to be the true shepherd of your life, to to have a personal relationship with him. You have never entered into that gate and been saved by him. Well, today is the day that you begin that relationship. Jesus died on the cross to give you peace and joy. Jesus died so that you can have eternal life. He died to rescue you and me from the lies so that we can live life to the fullest. And he did that all because he loves you. If that is you, I invite you to just speak to God and tell him that you want him in your life. Tell him that you want a, a, him in a personal way in your life. The scripture says that when we confess with our tongue and believe in our heart that Jesus is who he says we, he is, then we are forgiven and we are saved. So if that's you, your prayer could sound something like this. Father, I am a sinner. I believe that Jesus is the savior of the world, that he went to the cross and and he died for my sins so that I could have eternal life. I surrender my life to you right now. I believe that, that he rose again so that I could have life and life to the full. I give you all that I am and all who I want to be. And I pray all these things in your precious name. If you just prayed that prayer for the first time, I want to congratulate you because this is the most important decision you will ever make. And secondly, I want you to know that that you're not alone. You're not alone in this journey. So if you prayed that prayer, would you just click on the link at the bottom of this video and let us know who you are and how we can contact you? I want to... I have some tools I want to send you so that as you begin this journey of living life to the full that we can be do it together. And I would be honored if you took that journey, if I could take that journey with you. I am so personally excited for you, excited that you had the courage to begin the war on the lies in your life. This is how we kill the cockroach. This is how we kill the lies. Father God, I thank you that we are not in this battle alone, that we are not in this war alone. Thank you that it is by your power that we can defeat these lies that, that take a hold of our lives. So Father God, I pray that each and every day that we would come before you asking that you would join us in battle, in fighting these habits, fighting these, these thoughts, fighting these lies in our lives. God, I pray that as as this week, that as we begin to identify the cockroaches in our life, that you would give us the courage to investigate, to ask ourselves the hard questions. Give us insight into our lives. Father God, I pray that that as we read your, your, your word this week and as we put on the armor of your armor every single day that you would strengthen us, that as we go to battle, that we would be confident in our fight knowing that you are with us. Thank you for your promise that you are with us. Thank you that you have the last word, that death does not defeat us. The lies will not defeat us. Because our power lies in you. Thank you, God. And I pray all these things in your precious name. Amen. See ya. We are glad that you joined us today. Our church lobby time is starting right now. And we would love to connect with you. Follow the link below. Also, below you will see the recommended worship songs that go with today's message. Remember, you can continue to give online through our website, lifebridgeic.com give. At LifeBridge, 
Our mission is to make heaven more crowded. And we do that by bridging life to Christ. See you soon.